I'm in a great mood. Don't ruin it. <laughs> That's Mina Kimes, you just heard. And she, I don't know why it is that she would think that we'd be the ruiner of great moods because we are the creator of great moods. Uh, we have a whole lot of people here to enjoy this segment with you, Mina, as we get a lot football smarter and bob around uh, pop culture and the world in general. But let me just start because God bless football was obsessed with the Denver Broncos. What is real and true about what has happened with the Denver Broncos and what is real and not true? Because I've got a lot of people telling me Russell Wilson is playing very well. And I also see a lot of turnovers and a lot of sacks there. And I don't yeah. know whether he's playing very well or not. So tell me what's right and what's wrong. I, I, uh... I am so glad you asked me that. I don't know if Mike Ryan planted that question for you because I'm doing a YouTube video on that exact topic at YouTube slash dot com slash at Mina Kimes. But I will get into it here with you um, because it is something that I've been fascinated by. Like the fact that the Broncos started one and five and then ripped off five straight wins. That's only happened five times in NFL history. Week six, they had like an infinitesimal chance of making the playoffs. And now they are firmly in the hunt, which is such a great place to be as an NFL team when you get when you get on the in the hunt chart on TV shows. Um, so but it does, I think, uh, raise some questions about whether they're like actually in the hunt, whether they can keep this up, despite the fact they've played some and beaten some pretty good teams. So it's kind of a yes and no thing. So first of all, the things that are good and real, the offense was always fine. Even in those first few games when everybody was crapping all over them, obviously they got their butts kicked by Miami. They lost to Nathaniel Hackett in that revenge game. Throughout all of this, aside from maybe like one or two games, Russell Wilson was playing okay. Uh, he wasn't, I wouldn't say he looks like he did during you know the peak of his NFL career, but he's run a pretty efficient offense. He's basically Alex Smith now in, in Denver. Like Sean Payton got him to just check it down and lean on the run game. He has the lowest average depth of target of his entire career. So let Russ cook is over. It's let Russ make snacks, you know, um, and it's working for Denver. It's working. It's working. But the, the defense is sort of the big thing. And that's where I think the fraudulence claims have a little bit of veracity to them, because as you alluded to, they've been very dependent on turnovers. That is a thing that tends to regress. So it's unlikely they're going to be as good as they've been. However, they have also made some changes in personnel. They benched a couple guys in the secondary. Baron Browning came back. So when you dig into the underlying numbers, you do see some improvements in pass defense, particularly limiting explosives. They're just kind of an average defense now instead of a historically bad one. Uh, when talking about Russell Wilson and the offensive production, I'm glad you mentioned the defense because it's a, a has a huge hand in how the offense puts up points. In fact, they still struggle. The thing is, they're creating so many turnovers – that they're starting all these drives in opposing territory. In fact, during this five-game winning streak, and this comes courtesy of Cleveland Analytics, which is a great website, does great stuff, at uh, C-L-E-V-T-A on X. Cleveland, interesting. Uh, during this five-game uh, win streak, 30% of their drives have started following an opposing turnover. That's 11% higher than the second-place 49ers, and the gap between Denver and San Francisco is the same as San Francisco and number 28 overall uh, L.A. Rams, and they only have scored two touchdowns after starting their their drives on the average field position of 46 on the opposing territory. So they're just kind of getting lucky, and I doubt that this is super sustainable for them, Mina. You, you, what you just said there about how they've been the offense have been put in a good position because of all these turnovers. Turnovers tend to regress. Dan, you asked me last week about like stats that people tend to overlook when we talk about teams and trends. That is a huge one, not just turnovers, which is, you know, I, I said this about the Bills when they were losing it. Like the, the, often a lot of football is just explained by turnovers, frankly, but also field position, um, where the offense is to start drives. These are things you should look up when you're trying to figure out how good teams really are, how good different units really are. Because as Mike said, it, it really does tell a story and you're a thousand percent right about the Broncos. I will add one more thing, however, that I think somewhat explains their success in the red zone. Russell Wilson looks mobile again. So I know I just called him a, you know, check down Charlie. A snack, and a a snack, snack maker. A snack maker and an Alex Smith is what you just called him. I, I like snacks more than meals. So I, I don't want I you like to take him. that like as him. a negative. I like him more than you do. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, you don't feel like at weddings the snacks are too good, and then by the time they get to the meals, it's a letdown because the past hors d'oeuvres are so much better. Yeah, build the whole the plane out of the snacks. No. Yes. Here's, Cocktail yeah. hour. Here's forever. the problem. Here's the problem. You can't do that because in cooking the meal, it's just too much for too many people. It'll never taste good. But the food that you could do that would taste good, people say, well, this isn't a wedding meal. They want a steak. They want grilled salmon or whatever. But you can't do that in bulk and have it out in time. So that's the problem with wedding meals. I actually support your theory. It should be all hors d'oeuvres. There. It's very important well, that you support their theory. I also support it. The entire wedding, just hors d'oeuvres. And martinis. Hors d'oeuvres are easier to make in bulk. Like yes. cheap hors d'oeuvres, like a just... Pigs in a blanket are awesome, regardless of how much they cost. Whereas, like a main dish, can it made in bulk is a lot harder to pull off. Um, so that's the Russell Wilson offense in Denver. And, <laughs> and, but he's also been very mobile. And when you watch him, he he is actually one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL when he's on the move this year. A lot of those spectacular plays, there haven't been that many, but when they do happen, it tends to happen when he is on the move. He's been very good in the red zone at keeping plays alive. And I think it's that it's like that formula: the snacks up and down the field, running the football. And then the occasional, oh, Russell Wilson's still pretty fast. I think he lost like 10 or 15 pounds or something, and he looks like it. Mina, going back to snacks for just one moment, um, yeah. have you had a a full – they make pigs in a blanket by doing like full-size hot dogs wrapped in pastry and then cut into little pieces? Wait, you just take a like a corn dog and then make a – No, like a, a normal hot dog, and then you put you know a crescent roll around it, and then you bake it. And then you oh, cut it into pieces. Wow. So you start with a giant one, yeah. and then you mm. make it bite yeah. size. What is the benefit of that as opposed you know, to just using the little wieners? As I'm saying it out loud, I don't know. The nah, meat, but they're Charlotte. delicious. <laughs> I love you, Charlotte. <laughs> Thanks, you. It's, it's a girthier pig in a blanket. Cool. To take it back to the Broncos. Isn't mm -hmm. making all hors d'oeuvres when you have actual skill positions? You have four course meals on the outside. Can't you, you hold mean that Portland against Sutton them? And <laughs> yeah. They have they have good talent. Judy uh, Mims, although I can understand maybe being a little bit more lukewarm on Judy, considering how all the hoopla he came into the league with, and he hasn't necessarily delivered. But they have great skill positions allegedly. They're good. I wouldn't say they're great. Judy's pretty inconsistent. It has been fun to see Cortland Sutton return to form. I don't know. I mean, he was awesome early in his career. I don't know if you remember, like 2019 or so, before he had all those injuries. Uh, and then I knew that. This was sustainable when he posted the Russell Wilson apology form. I don't know if you guys see that or if you're familiar with this concept where fan bases circulate these quarterback apology forms and they're like the Josh Allen one, which I definitely should have signed. And I don't know if anyone's ever said that to me. Uh, I'll sign it now. Uh, it's like, I was wrong. I, he's amazing. Here's the dumb reason I believed I, I, I listened to the wrong person or I you know, pay attention to Twitter. And so Sutton posted one for Russell Wilson. And the second he did that, I was like, oh, this is this is good. This is a real relation. He has defined the relationship. He loves his quarterback, which you remember birthday party last year. A lot of questions. How many friends does Russell Wilson really have? It's a pretty good sign when your best friend in the locker room is your number one wide receiver. Put it on the poll or maybe they're best friends because he's the number one wide receiver. Put it on the poll at Lebitard Show. Has there ever been a good wedding main meal or have you ever had a good wedding main meal? When you say good outside of the pocket, Mina, who are the best quarterbacks outside of the pocket? You know, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Um, Dak Prescott's been very good when he's been outside the pocket. Dak Prescott's been good at like just about everything this year. Uh, but so it's an interesting mix, right? It's the guys who create and are just impossible to bring down. And then it's guys who are good at throwing on the run. I think Dak is good at throwing on the run. He's a really good example of that. Dan's wedding had a really good food. Oh, it did actually. Yeah. Cause yeah. he had the, he had the stations. Oh, I love stations. Right. Carving oh, stations. If you're going to do stuff. it, do stations. He had an entire dessert room. Yep. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> I think shocker. about that like once a month. I have one of those in my house. <laughs> Thanks for the invite, Dan. Yeah, Mina, your hair, your you hair is so perfect. It has bounce, <laughs> volume, and body. But sticking to the oh, AFC, uh, will the Buffalo Bills make the playoffs this year? Yeah. I don't know. I... I, I... I think their chances right now are like uh, under 50% or something. 15. 15% I, I, okay. is where it was because of the upcoming schedule. I looked at the schedule, and I think if they win four of the next five games or something, they're still firmly in the mix. 
I do think I'm, I'm not ruling them out. It's crazy. When you look at teams like the aforementioned Broncos who are six and five suddenly, right? The bills are so clearly a better football team and uh, you know, they have had bad turnover luck and things have not gone their way. And, the, and they've had like just things go wrong in the worst situations. I do feel like there's a not out. It's not impossible that they win those four games. Like it, but it is, they have to win them all. They're a better team. It's frustr. It's really frustrating right now. This feels like an entry point to talk about my Steelers, Mina, because you were someone who was pretty high on Kenny Pickett in the preseason. And then <laughs> things have, yes, yeah. a little bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, a lot of caveats. I had okay, a lot of caveats. Fair. So did I. One of them was Matt Canada. He has now been fired. And their offense, yeah. for the first time in 58 games, had over 400 yards. Do you feel yeah. any differently about the Steelers now at 7-4 and four than you did four weeks ago when they were struggling and yet still kind of winning games that they were being outgained in? I think that uh, I thought that the offense did look better. It wasn't all... You know, I mean, there's always whenever like a coordinator or coach gets fired, I would never bet against the team or the unit because there's like that dead cat bounce. And I had a feeling they were going to have a big day. But, you know, some of the things they did were impressive. I think the run game has really improved. The offensive line has been good at blocking the run. It felt like the run in the past were finally tied together. Dominique and I talked about this uh one minute on my podcast. Um, and, and did you just say notably, one? Did you just say one minute out loud because Jessica just held up one minute for only yeah. you to see? I, I, we, yeah, I thought she was I, talking I, to someone off screen. Like one minute, I'm not. Mina, done why here. are you not one better minute, at Lenny. this? Why can you not do? Why can you not multitask? Why can you? You've been doing television. Oh, I want to hear what she had to say about the Steelers, Dan. Shh, there's well, no, now well, they're now only they're 35 down seconds. Like 40 seconds. Stop. I know, but but me. I don't understand why that's still happening Rap. to you. You're a professional. I have to say it verbally because otherwise, I well, it's 30 seconds now. I have 30 seconds to explain how the Steelers' offense looked thanks to you. Yeah, but um, you have another segment. What do you mean, thanks to me? You are cutting into no, my time. But you said 18. one minute out loud when you were the only one being shown a sign that said one minute you're a professional television person yeah and now i have 10 seconds to say that kenny pickett was finally thrown to the middle field he was the, le- the target of the middle field the least of any quarterback in the nfl prior to last week he was nine for 11 for 132 yards this week thrown to the middle field pratt fire with being back played a huge role and that really helps tying together the run in the pass thanks for not changing the times though i appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> We did do that to her last time. <laughs> well, he did. Uh, Chris Cody did shout rap at you just to distract you because he's not the one holding the signs anymore. But there is something that I did want to do with you here, and I think we might have a better segment. The segment's pretty pretty good the way that it is, Mina. But I think if we make it now rapid-fire an- uh, analysis for the people who are listening at 1.5 or 2.0 speed, I think we could get even more information out of you because your information is really good. So as a device, I don't know if it'll exhaust you, but I have a lot of questions that I'd like to go through. So so go ahead. I'm sorry. Am I not one-upping Chris Berman? (laughs) I, I think you can do what? this as real the real fastest. <laughs> yeah, but I I believe this is the real. I believe we can create the real fastest two minutes in football coverage. Uh, but what you got to go the fastest one minute and forty five seconds. I got to like prices right him. Okay, let's do that. This will be this will be the fastest. Give her a, give her a clock over there. Uh, we're gonna go. Uh, the fastest one minute and 59 seconds that we can do with Mina. And I have a variety of questions. I don't think I've ever seen a six and six team have a 100 point point differential in their favor. I don't think the bills are mediocre. I think that's a great football team, not a good one, Mina. I think it's great. And I'm confused by their six and six. I think they're very good. Wait, are we doing the fast thing now? or I, Whatever I you want to do, Mina. Me? I did just uh, tease the fast thing, but if you don't want to do that. I didn't know if we were doing it now or at the end. It was a... Oh, God, the music. Okay, uh, the Buffalo Bills, very good offense, okay defense, a lot of injuries having lost Matt Milano and Tredavious White. I don't think they're a great football team. As a result of that, I think they have a great quarterback, and I think because of that great quarterback, they're always in games is a big reason why they have that point differential. They belong in the playoffs, but obviously the turnover luck has bit them at the worst times. Do the Jags Splash. deserve to be at the top of the conference? No, the Jags don't deserve to be at the top of the conference. They deserve to be in the conversation, in the mix, whatever cliche you want to use. They are, a, I think, better football team than they looked at the beginning of the year. It seems like they figured something that offense, pushing the ball down the field, the offensive line in particular, played well against the Texans. They have a good quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. And this defense, sneaky underrated, one of the best run defenses in the NFL. However, that said, when I look at the likes of the Chiefs and the Ravens, I don't think they stack Splash. up. Splash. Quicker. <laughs> Do you believe that there's anything wrong with the Chiefs? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, the fact, obviously, the wide receiver drops being the thing that stands out the most. The defense is very good. However, something very encouraging happened last week with the Kansas City Chiefs against the Las Vegas Raiders, which is a receiver not named Travis Kelsey actually caught the football and made plays with the ball in his hands. That is enormous because Travis Kelsey commands so much of attention. The wide receivers all get one-on-one matchups. All you need is one of those young wide receivers to Splash. not suck. Do this one slow. Jason Kelsey, hold on a second. I don't want to do it slow yet. What are you doing producing the show from back there? I want her to start talking slower get him out of here go sit in the penalty <laughs> box go sit in the penalty Mike, box Mike is uh, the segment more. was working fine the way that it was jason kelsey told peter king that he doesn't understand how they're the only team with one loss because he believes the top of football is evenly matched Do you agree with him uh, I think that there's about three teams in either conference that are at the top. I mean, the NFC is extraordinarily top-heavy. It's actually a good point by him because the San Francisco 49ers, of course, are playing this weekend. Dallas Cowboys, Eagles, I would put them all in pretty much the same tier. But there is a big jump below that to the next tier in the NFC. Are the 49ers, are you willing to make the argument they're better than the Eagles? I think that top to bottom, both sides, yes. They are better. However, I think when you look at the individual matchups, Niners struggles in run defense in particular, the Eagles do match up with it well with them, which is why I think this game's going to be super close. Who's better, Splash. Jalen Hurts or Dak Prescott? Oh, God. Um, I think Jalen Hurts is the more successful quarterback. I think that Dak Prescott, um, his highs, oh, God, I don't know. Ah, you got me. I don't want to do it. They're just so different. They're both really, really good. That's the one you're going to sit out. It's too even. It's too close to call. You got to have an opinion. You got to. They're you gotta both have good a... at really different things. Splash. I think they're really comparable. That alone, by the way, is apparently like a divisive Splash. take that they're about the same. Splash. Who's your MVP? Right now, it's Dak Prescott. So I guess I answered. Oh, oh Jesus Splash. Christ, Mina. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> on the end of the year i mean I, jalen hurts is the guy he just has like winning plays and like the biggest moments uh, but consistency over the course of the game there you know he's had bad games and stretches where he's not been as good but then all the has like the draw at the end of the game and you remember why he got paid all that money and why he's so awesome what can the browns expect from joe flacco <laughs> uh i think joe flacco it's so it's, it's, do you think he wants to play in the NFL? Because by the end, he looks so like disinterested. But you, if you're coming back, if you're flying to Beret, like to, to Ohio to be the quarterback, even though you haven't been playing football for a, a long time, you must really, even though you made over $100 million, you must really love football, despite the fact that your face never Splash. looks like someone who loves football. Competent quarterback play is your answer. Hasn't he always just looked like that? Yeah. It, it really incredible. is like, he has like resting, like, yeah. Be face. He could just you know? be a sicko who like really wants to torture himself. I think some guys yeah. are like that. Like yeah. Jason Peters, forty-one, coming back to play tackle for the Seattle Seahawks, also made over a hundred million dollars. Like, why do you want to go out there yeah. and have Nick Bosa like ram into your face? I don't. It blows my mind. Do Splash. you believe that Juju has it right when he says it's a good pickup line to tell a woman that she has a booger in her nose? No, this. I would be so embarrassed and so upset. That's like well, you have. Foot food in your teeth when leading the witness that, it never feels good <laughs> splash <laughs> what are the baltimore ravens are they the most talented team physical team in the afc the afc uh i think it depends on which side of the ball I, I think that they're the most talented team top to bottom because of how good the defense is the defense is also very physical very well coached um and then yeah if you consider both sides of the football i think that's fair to say Splash. Can you give me some of the favorite numbers that you have uncovered? Because you do deep dives into the analytics. You are fascinated by what the Splash. numbers reveal. Uh, give us a deep dive. Oh, you need me to shorten up my question? Yeah, okay. Your most impressive numbers that you found. I wanted to give her time to think, you know? Splash. It's, uh, okay. I wanted the clock's to... running, the problem. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, I don't, you know, this is just, I, we were talking about Dak Prescott and his MVP case. I was ahead of tonight's game, which is against my beloved Seattle Seahawks, who are going to lose, but going to look losing, looking amazing because they got the throw back uniforms on. I was trying to find weaknesses for Dak Prescott. You can play, pull, okay, what's his QBR against this look, this look, this look. He is first in, like, just about everything. First against man coverage, first on Splash. third down, first outside the pocket, first, it, it's a very alarming situation. <laughs> There's a big Does game. Splash mean stop? Yes. This you just caught on to Wow. It. <laughs> Splash. I thought it was like a, like a, a Nobody, <laughs> nobody like made it explicit. Sometimes they're Splash. just sound effects around here. Uh, Who's the guy on McAfee who like hypes people? I thought you were doing that for me. Like, yeah. Oh, Splash. you thought you thought we were like, oh, great. Another great answer, Mina. Give her that one. Yeah. I thought uh, maybe it was I should have like, changed um, it to. 
You know when people do the water emoji? Yeah. Like, ooh, splash. <laughs> That's not splash. Hey, yo. <laughs> I want to ask you about uh, your Washington Huskies. Huge game, Pac-12 championship on Friday. What are the pro prospects <laughs> for these two starting quarterbacks? Uh, Bo Nix and, and Mike. Yeah, it, I... I feel like there's my it's still a little bit early I do think there's a pretty big drop off from the first two quarterbacks in the draft to these players Penix, Nix um, I think both of them are kind of flawed prospects frankly who have some interesting traits I don't think either of them are going to go like super early in the draft but you know if you're a team Splash. like picking outside maybe the Pittsburgh Steelers or something you might be interested Splash. Roma Dunze is the guy that <laughs> Mina. It was so much better when I thought Splash meant I was saying good things because it was like amping me up to keep going. Mina, just keep and going. Now, just ignore it. Pretend it's still good things. Mina, did you hear the fart heard around the world on The Golden Bachelor? I did not. I do watch The Golden Bachelor. Did you hear that about his dark past as revealed oh, by Hollywood yes. reporters? Yes, we did. But before we do that, we have to play this out. No, nope, we cannot. Never mind. Uh, Splash. We will, get it. we will play. Thank you, I mean, You produce the show, too. We don't have enough producers. Get him out of here. Mina, what do you make of Justin Herbert's struggle? Both of you go sit in the penalty box. <laughs> Am I supposed to answer I slow just because George's you're asking the question slow? Is that... No. Answer quickly. I actually can't play it because it's off the same pot that Mina's on, so forget that idea. The fart. Splash. We wanted to play the fart for you, but the slow question was about Justin Herbert. What's true about him? Uh, it cut out right before you said what's true about him. So I could choose who I want to talk about, or I could just ask you. Justin Herbert. Guess. Oh, Herbert. Um, incredible talent. Um, extremely astute processor. Uh, very, I think he has all the top end quarterback traits. Um, very flawed football team, obviously. Splash. Underrated issues with personnel. Is Staley going to be fired? Probably. Splash. But it seems like it might not happen midseason. Does he deserve to be from anything you've seen? It feels like I would. I want to say this. I think Staley and Herbert are the ones who we constantly talk about because obviously they're both front facing. The Chargers GM Tom Telesco, I feel like, deserves a lot of criticism for how this team is put together. Granted, they've had bad injury luck, but like there's been some really bad decisions in terms of personnel. And I, this is whenever you say stuff about the Chargers, people are like, Splash. "Oh, you're making excuses for." The <laughs> There you go. No, what's not right about this? This is this is this happened on PTI originally when they put in the bell at the end of segments. Uh, originally, uh, Kornheiser and Wilbon didn't know what to do, and they just stopped talking immediately. Now you've done that to Mina. I wanted to hear. It's not a bad thing. I, no, I want her to it's talk. It's freeze tag. I want her to talk right? through You're playing... it. It's like the Squid Game when they do red light, green light, and you have to stop or you die. Outside of the Bills, who's a team that people think isn't that good that is better than that? Ooh, uh, I really like the Houston Texans as a sneaky playoff. I don't know. I don't know if people think that. I know people like C.J. Stroud. I don't know if they Splash. appreciate some of the improved. <laughs> C.J. Stroud, uh, are you as amazed as everyone else is? I don't feel like we've seen many rookie quarterbacks ever do this. Yes, I bought all the way in on C.J. Stroud because he does. There's some stuff where it's like playing within the Shanahan type offense that they run, throwing over the middle of the field, all of that, setting up guys' ski yards after the catch. But he also makes plays outside of the structure of that offense. He's been amazing on third down, amazing Splash. under pressure. He's been David Tepper. Yeah, obviously, uh, very easy to dunk on is not being a good owner right now because the firings. Where I get a, it's a little tricky with me is when you actually point to the individual firings, they all kind of make sense. Uh, the problem, and I've talked about this, is is the hiring, some of the decisions he's made. Another case, by the way, where everyone's so focused on the quarterback and the head coach, the GM has been very, very uh, bad. <laughs> the Bengals. Uh, yeah, they're done. Splash. <laughs> <laughs> Their head coach being four four twenty eight and one without uh, Burrow. That's not that surprising, is it? Well, I mean, look at who the quarterbacks have been without Burrow. I think it's you can't really, especially I would, I would say this about the Bengals too. Um, the offense in particular is so built around Joe Burrow being the quarterback. Like they don't use a lot of trickery. There's no pre snap motion. It's just Joe Burrow get in the shotgun, read it out, hit these star wide receivers, use your you know exceptional uh, processing abilities. Splash. So when you take him, <laughs> you can Fifth. find her on <laughs> YouTube.com slash at Mina Kimes. <laughs> For the Mina Kimes Show featuring Lenny. Mina, thank you so much. We'll thank talk to you, you next week. Mina. It's Thursday Thunder.
It's brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. You can follow our parlay on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Juju, always great when you're in town. Please let the audience know what today's Thursday Thunder is. Oh, the sheath has been unsheathed. Oh, wow. (laughs) You see how I said sheath out loud. We are going with the Dallas Cowboys. Minus nine points against the Seattle Trash Hawks tonight because Geno has written back and he hasn't showed up in years. Chris Cody loves betting those giant favorites. Love it. Yes, we do love it. And you know who else I love tonight? Michael J. Gallup for 18 yards tonight. He will gallop his ass for at least 18 of them mother truckers. You can believe it, John John. 18 yards, one catch, two catches, three catches. All you have is Gallup over 18 yards. Big Mike Gallup. They call, his friends call him Big Mike. I'm going to call him Big Mike for 18 yards tonight, Daddy. That's not that big. It's just 18 yards. What hey. happened to John John? Hey, America's team, everything is bigger in Texas, Dano. And we're next. the next leg, we're going to go to the W. B. 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 <laughs> B. <laughs> See, if you were paying attention, <laughs> we're going to go with Virginia Tech. Money line over LSU tonight, Daddy. What? Yes, we feisty. are. The return of Angel Reese will be spoiled. You were very hot there. You came a gre- very aggressive uh, microphone usage there. Juice. Sorry, you, Dano. You, it was a little strong. It, it was a little terrifying. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You you disagree? It was it was very strong. Uh, I mean, it felt on. inspiring to me. Yeah. I'm ready to run through a wall. Me too. With a sword. Put it on the poll, please, Juju. Is there very much inspiration, uh, very much difference between uh, the things that inspire you and the things that scare you? Because uh, we experienced all of that very differently. Also experienced differently today, the news that Sports Illustrated has a new sportsman of the year. Uh, 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 we call sports, it person. sports person now, Dan. Excuse me. Thank wait, you, Jessica. Wait a second. Wait a second. Now, when you say Sports Illustrated has a new sportsman of the year. Sports, sports person, person of the yes. year. <laughs> are we saying someone at Sports Illustrated? Or did the algorithm decide that this is going to be our sports well, person of the year? considering who it is. It is a good. It's tough to say. It's a good algorithm choice. It was a choice that infuriated, I'm sure, Mike Ryan. The sports person of the year is. Victor Webinyama? Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders of the four win Colorado Buffalo. Four wins. They were over under three and a half wins. I thought that Buffalo was one of those that could, uh, like Owl, that could be per- plural and singular. But name. I'm just saying, Owl? like, their name. Owl is not plural yeah. and singular. You made their mascot a city. Okay. Are you thinking of Moose? Moose or even, Meese? Even better. Moose. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the Classic. wrong thing. Maybe I was just an old person dropping my S's. As like I've the been doing. Stanford Cardinal thing yeah. happening? It's a tree. I, I, I actually think this is a worthy choice when you think about where that program what? was last year. <laughs> Look at this! I can't, I can't believe it. I, I'm, I'm stunned. By He's what zagging when we thought he was going to say. Well, I just can't believe what you just said. I, very rarely does someone step in year one, dominate the national conversation, and get the kind of results. I mean, seven and five after a one-win season. Congratulations to David Braun over at Northwestern for being the rightful sports person of the. No. See how he did. He set you up, and then he went. Mm. He's he zagged. He zigged again. He zagged, and everyone thought he would zig. Actually, then, no, no, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zig again. What? I, I get it. I get it. I don't. What we, what we saw with, you don't. What we saw with coverage around this, this head coach and coach prime, who very clearly has it and has had it his entire life, in terms of a conversation starter, for that program, it ends the season with four wins to dominate the sports conversation for almost two months. I do think it's actually a worthy choice. It's not necessarily about accomplishments. I do think part of the, the conversation here is conversation. It makes a lot of sense when you think about the fact that I'm pretty sure they need to submit the story for magazine publication like a few months in advance now because they're like, <laughs> as long as he doesn't lose out, this will still hit. It's like, <laughs>
<laughs> but I will say it is it is perfect for Sports Illustrated after this whole AI scandal happened that this was Sports Person because I don't know how many people like care about who Sports Person is anymore. It used to be like a huge thing at the end of the year, but every single joke has just written itself about. So who picked? Was did the computer pick Deion Sanders? But as Mike said, I don't know if you were being serious or not. I mean, deserving in terms of the amount of like things he's brought to Colorado into the football program and that's what the story by Pat Forty is about but also yeah this every year there's like September and October he dominated yeah well I again I think it's worthy and I don't put much stock in in sports person of the year anymore just because SI has long since been a diminished product but this is as good a, a nominee as there is in sports when you think about the attention that we've devoted look at the We've had plenty of conversation. Those videos tend to do well when it comes to Deion Sanders. So there's very clearly something there, and I, I can't refute it. I think I think we should talk about who would the funniest sports person of the year have been this year. This because one is this, kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, it's, this one's kind of funny. Well, that's, it's like, is this, or would it be just like Tom Brady again? Because that, I think, would Something be like an actual robot would be. Yeah, yeah. right. Connor Bill Stallions. Belichick. <laughs> he actually might be sports person. Connor Stallions is my sports person of the year. Oh, wow. A legend. Yeah, just for the name alone. Uh, this is the thing that I'm confused by. I thought sports person of the year had to be a person who played the sport, not coach. No, it. it was a horse once, like recently. But that, that I think horse it was is Nyquist. The horse is playing the sport, though. It wasn't the jockey. But it's not a person. No, it's a horse. I'm, I'm just saying, like, sports horse this is the, the last, the you last, the person part. I mean, the last handful of of winners: S- Steph Curry, Tom Brady, LeBron James, Brianna Stewart, Naomi Osaka, Laurent Duvernay Tardif. Patrick Mahomes, Megan Rapino, the Golden State Warriors as an entire <laughs> that was that was staff, quite the event. Let me tell label. you, because oh, yeah. we were at that one. When you consider sure the were. when you consider the window, uh, it ends slightly before the end of the year. I think Messi with a, the World Cup Simone win. Simone Biles. Was, no, he won in twenty twenty two. Really? But, yeah, that doesn't no, count. He, doesn't he count. did. Well, Sorry. When did it end? Because this is World a lot Cup sooner. So they so. announced Sports Person of the doesn't Year sooner. Not, guess what? If you want to do something great and be Sports Person of the Year, don't have your greatest moment happen in December. Last How about year. that? How about that? Okay. How about you do it? Needs it? to be How September and October. How about you do it earlier? I, ju- I just got to see the timeline because this one was announced way earlier than that. Should have been Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese Caitlin together Clark. doing this on the cover. We are or, or to each other. They should be doing it to each yes, other, right? Face to, to each face, other. Yeah. like a boxing poster. Right. We're having some time issues here because what do you uh, mean? Mike Ryan has the uh, wrong year for Messi winning the World Cup, and Sports Illustrated should have made Deion Sanders the Sports Person of the Month. Uh, of the, the month. <laughs> Here's of an idea for a Sports Person: If we're going to do whole teams, the Spanish Women's National Team. Yes. I cannot think of a more deserving group of people who have been through a lot this year. Also won the World Cup. And then their coach and the president of their federation <laughs> got fired for being terrible people. That is right. That's always uh, that's always a lot of fun when that happens. Uh, Jessica, you were telling me the other day that you were reading a story about something that was truly horrifying. That I just, I can't believe how it happened. And I want to know the backstory now. Can't help but want to know the backstory of how it happened. Which is, I've read stories about people eating their food and finding animals or finding disgusting things. But I have not read a story of a person eating a salad and biting into a human finger. Yum. Yes, it happened in Connecticut. A woman was eating a salad and accidentally found a finger in it. Like she ate a finger and then she is suing them now for it. And to me, like you're eating a salad and you're like, oh, my God, what is this? This is disgusting. You think like, wow, what could it be around here? It's just the salad. That's the reaction from people when we just order salad. Everyone today was freaking out about just the fact that we had lettuce in bowls for lunch. And it really... Why are you staring I mean, at me? Hold on. It really upset me <laughs> oh because it's like we finally get something good for lunch around here, and you guys are acting like it's so disgusting. It like you just a found lunch. a finger in your salad. Rifled with onions, by the way. Pickled, I, though. Pickled onions. Not well, as strong. Uh, you know, I here. bit into a cookie the other day, and I felt there was a tooth in it, and I forgot that I had a crown, and I freaked <laughs> out that there was a tooth in my cookie, like flipped out. 
And then, what'd you do? You have something for everything. Yeah. yeah. You had the and belt then, thing yesterday. Yeah. And I realized, I was like, it was my favorite bakery. I was like, oh my God, I, I can't you're ever say your go. Favorite tooth. Well, also, but I was like, oh my God, I can't ever go to this bakery anymore. There was a tooth in it. And then I was like, oh my God. I was like, it's mine. But then I freaked out because I forgot I had the crown. So I was like, my tooth just came apart and I brought it to the dentist. And they were like, well, you have a crown and this is it. And we'll put it back on. Heavy as the head. Lucy, why is your mouth hanging open? Just because of how odd uh, one of the stars of Oddball is? No, that's when I get high and I eat munchies. Yes. That's my biggest fear is that my tooth, my teeth will fall out into the food I'm eating. So when she said that, that really yes. freaked me out because every t- like it, ha- I have that thought like maybe once every three months I get really anxious that my teeth are gonna fall Lucy, out. Lucy, I have dreams that my teeth are falling out. So when it happened, I was like, no, it's happening. And then there was an explanation for it, so I felt better. But when you buy into something there's like something in there i feel for the woman in connecticut lucy uh when you get high you think your teeth are going to fall out you get paranoid that people are trying to kill you i get paranoid that my teeth are going to fall out not kill me just steal my kidney okay. that, that, that one time that one time that's a hefty kidney. i always think someone's looking in my window <laughs> really yeah i like just this. think i'm gonna forget to breathe i'll like walk inside and i'm like on my couch and i'll just be like you know, like look out the window it's like Who's that? Oh, it's just my reflection. Okay. I don't really get high that much because I'm just like this. I just laugh at my own text. <laughs> Does that ever happen? I'm like, I as I'm like typing it out, I'm just like, this is funny. I usually do a Thursday Thunder with a sword when I'm high. <laughs> Dan? It's fairly stunning that even when high, Mike Ryan's greatest hire is just looking and reading his own voice yeah. Yeah. And, and being amused by himself yeah. at, at the highest yeah. form of I got high. it going on. <laughs> it's just charming and funny, so, so likable. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just review the things that you've read before or just you start no, texting I'm in up, a way I'm like that... formulating it. I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> the, the comedic timing, even via tag, is just, you, you sell yourself short, Mike Ryan. <laughs> you, you really do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you wanted to go there. No, no, I wanted to go a completely different story, but I like his story better. Okay, excellent ending to the segment. Well, that's I mean, why I went thank doing you. this thank you. to tell him to keep going. Splash. <laughs>